Hi everyone, Christine here, former data director and hiring manager and also founder of the Analytics Accelerator program, which takes you on the most direct path to starting a job in data through real hands-on experience with the actual job. And in today's video, I want to share with you some insights on the strategic roadmap that helped over 70% of students in my first class land their first data analytics job within just six months of the program ending, many of them actually doubling their salaries and getting offers within six weeks of applying. The next few minutes, these are some things that we're going to talk through. So the first is challenges and misconceptions that a lot of early career data analysts have and how to overcome these challenges and misconceptions for a roadmap with the resume, interview strategy, and portfolio projects, how to actually stand out and today's competitive job market and also give you proof and motivation that this actually works by sharing with you some of the journeys of my students over the last few months and also leave you with an action plan so you know exactly what to do after this video. So over the last year or so, I have spoken with over 200 individual aspiring data analysts and these are some of the challenges that I'm seeing resonate with people today. The first is not having a clear roadmap because you're just not sure how to piece together all the information that's out there and then having skills skills, but having no system. Maybe you have some technical fundamental skills, but you're just not sure how these are actually applied in the real business context. Maybe you're feeling like the guy who won French Scrabble, but doesn't actually know how to speak French. And also feeling like you're sending your resume out to a digital black hole because LinkedIn is very good at telling us how many other people have actually applied to these jobs. And you might just be asking yourself, how am I actually going to stand out? Then also feeling lost in translation because you have skills in other industries, but you're just not sure how to translate this in a way that actually resonates with data hiring managers. And you might feel that you're not necessarily a beginner, but you're also not necessarily experienced. A lot of these challenges actually stem from common misconceptions that people have because of all the misinformation that's out there. And one of the really big ones is thinking that you need to focus on personal portfolio projects and just thinking, I just need to build projects about something that I'm interested in, something I'm passionate about, and I need to build more of them so that I can show my portfolio and these Kaggle projects to hiring managers. Also thinking that you need to really focus on the technical skills and just, you know, feeling like I just need to reach higher levels of difficulty on platforms like Data Lemur and LeetCode. And then lastly, also just thinking that it's a numbers game and just thinking that the spray and pray approach is going to get you somewhere and feeling like if I send my resume to hundreds of job postings, then something must come through. If you think about it, data hiring managers are looking for people who can demonstrate that they can do the actual job. And so how do we overcome these challenges and misconceptions? Options. We need to use a roadmap that focuses on three main principles. The first is application over theory, company interests over your own niche and personal interests, and also developing familiarity with the actual system over just siloed skills. Okay, so how does this actually all break down? I'm going to just talk through the four main pillars of this roadmap and then give you a bird's eye perspective for how it all fits together. The first one is obviously technical skills, and there is a lot of information out there that already covers the technical stuff that you need to know. So I won't go too into detail about this, but the main things are Excel and SQL. I also recommend just getting really familiar with one of the visualization softwares, whether that be Tableau, Power BI, or Looker, it's much more important to actually get really good at one of these platforms rather than knowing a little bit about all three of them. Because most of the time you're not really going to get tested on this in interviews, but they will want to know a little bit more about how you think about these kinds of visualizations. Python I also put down as a plus because a lot of job descriptions will put this down as preferred, but if you're an early career data analyst, you probably aren't actually going to get tested on this in the interview, and most of the time we we don't really use this on the job, at least in the first few years, unless it's for a few really specific automation tasks. Then when it comes to the projects, this is where things get kind of fun. And a lot of people, like I said, they think that they need to just build projects on something that they're interested in and something that they're passionate about. But remember, hiring managers are pretty much placing a tens of thousands of dollar bet that you are the person who can do the job. They're probably not that much interested in what your personal kind of data interests are in the beginning. They actually just want to see you apply apply these technical skills the same way that a real data analyst would at work. And so you need to build projects that actually use realistic data. They analyze critical business metrics and surface business insights and recommendations that would be useful to a company. I think one of the hardest parts about this is finding the actual realistic data because a lot of people go to Kaggle or they use data sets that are really widely available through something like the Google Data Analytics Certificate, for example, or like bike share data, Airbnb data, or the Superstore data set. But there are so many people who are doing projects on 
on these data sets. Instead, what I recommend is finding a data set that has actually been published by a company. So you have to do a little bit of searching to actually find this. But for example, Netflix published a data set that shows the watch time of popular films and TV shows. And then you can actually augment this data with other things like the genre or how long something aired for and do analysis on that because that's going to be much more relevant to a company than if you were to analyze something like Bachelorette data or March Madness data. And so I do have a video about the do's and don'ts of portfolio projects, which you can check out here. Now, when it comes to the standout projects, these are the main pillars that you want to make sure you have. The first are business metrics. So if you think about the kind of industries and business models that you're interested in applying to, think about the kind of metrics that are actually relevant to those industries. So for example, I used to work at Vimeo as a data director, and that is a SaaS company. That's subscription as a service. And so if I were to apply to these kinds of companies, then I would want to do analysis on metrics like bookings, active users, subscribers, page visits, and click-through rate. And if I have a project on this, then this also applies to many other SaaS companies like Netflix and Zoom, for example. You also want to use industry best practices. And so this means a few things. The first is you should actually use GitHub. A lot of times people spend time building a really beautiful personal website, but this is not actually what we do on the job. Using GitHub shows that you're really familiar with the actual data ecosystem that we use on the day to day. Then you want to actually surface insights that would be relevant to a stakeholder team. And this could be, for example, someone on marketing, finance, sales, or operations. And then lastly, it's really important to actually get hands on experience with using and working with data in an organization. What I'm seeing today is that people who have some semblance of real data analyst experience in an organization context, for example, by volunteering, finding contract or freelance work from their own personal network, or even doing unpaid internships, those people are having a lot better luck getting job offers for early career data analyst positions compared to people who have experience in a totally unrelated industry and just do portfolio projects. So after you build your portfolio projects and hands-on experience is where you need to actually start building your NACA application. And that consists of a standout resume, your portfolio, and maybe also your volunteer or internship experiences. And you also need to refine your narrative for how your personal traits and your previous experiences actually come together to make you a really strong data analyst. A lot of people don't realize that this story is actually really important because when people walk into an interview and they come with a story of like, I've worked in this other industry and then I did some projects on my own and now I want to be a data analyst. It's not really compelling to someone who is looking for confidence that you can do the actual job. Instead, it's a lot more effective to be able to tell how your background, those traits that you've acquired through those experiences actually combine together to make you a really strong analyst today. So the elements of this knockout application, the first one is a resume that I use a framework for called the Minds Framework. And this stands for metrics, intention, narrative, design, and skills. And I do talk about this in my first video. With the standout projects, this is what we just talked about, having company relevant insights, industry best practices, and also showing your skills as a system. This is another important one. And then your cover letter and your narrative is where you have a 10 second overview of how all your traits and your experiences come together to make you a strong data analyst. Then when it comes to the actual job hunt, you need to position yourself as a standout fit for a fewer number of roles rather than a mediocre or halfway fit for a large number of roles. The biggest one here is actually networking. That's a really big strategy because these days just cold applying, it's not gonna get you really far. Networking and being able to actually drive value to a hiring manager immediately is gonna significantly expedite your job hunt. So I will also talk about this in a little bit. With the actual interview process, you need to be prepared to do a take home assessment, a behavioral interviews, and also tactical interviews. If we take a bird's eye view for how all this fits together, Together. These are what the four pillars look like. And just as a general estimate and a benchmark for you, if you were to do this completely solo, each of these pillars takes about, I would say, a few months. But of course, that varies depending on where you are already in terms of your skills and experience. If you are someone who's working in an industry that is already a bit tangential to data like finance or accounting or even like marketing analytics, for example, that timeline might be a little bit shorter for you. I also want to talk about what makes a standout applicant because someone who's actually going to stand out in the job market today actually has a lot more than what we just discussed in that roadmap. The first is having domain knowledge. If you have existing domain knowledge in an industry like marketing, finance, real estate, healthcare, research, sales, nonprofits, or social sciences, you should actually show this existing knowledge in interviews. 
Something that I have noticed in students who are able to get jobs really quickly or get offers that have quite high salaries is that they tend to be the people who excelled in communication. There is a whole language that we use at work and the more that you can kind of signal to someone that you're already familiar with this language, the more you also show that you're already an experienced data professional. Then when it comes to the actual projects, this is where you should move away from doing one project per skill because realistically at work in one project, we're actually moving between many of the different tools as a Houdis system and as a language that we use on the everyday today. In this project, you can see that we were actually analyzing data from Zoom and looking at different trends and fluctuations in the key business metrics for this company. Then, like I said, you want to also focus on getting real hands-on experience with an organization. This can be a really awesome stepping stone to your first full-time data analytics position because right now it is quite difficult to jump from a totally unrelated industry just to self-learning projects and then jump into your first full-time data analyst role. These are a few platforms that some of my students have had really good success with in terms of getting some volunteer experience that actually helped them land their first data role. So I want to leave you with some motivation and inspiration and also some proof that this strategy works by sharing with you some of the stories of my students who were bumping into the same exact challenges just a few months ago before they were actually able to land their first data analytics roles. The first is Pat. He was a former sales manager and journalist, and he was a self learned analyst who had studied these kinds of skills by himself for a year and a half. And he was having a lot of trouble actually getting past the resume wall. After we redid his resume, focused on the interview skills and also rebuilt new projects, he was actually able to land his first data analyst role within just 50 applications and he doubled his salary. Yorley was previously a lab technician as an analyst and within six weeks of applying, she landed an operations data analyst role at a healthcare company and she also doubled her salary. Augie was previously in customer success and consulting and also had self-studied these skills for about half a year. He had sent less than a hundred resumes before landing his first data analyst role at Peloton. Nico was recently a business development specialist and also a mortgage loan officer. He landed a job within six months of applying at Coca-Cola with this roadmap. And Darshan was recently an undergrad and lab coordinator. He landed an internship offer and a full-time data analyst role within the same week. They not only focused on having the right technical skills, but more importantly, having the right roadmap. Map. The interviewing stuff, I am going to do more videos on in the future because there's a lot more to say about this in terms of the kinds of questions that you should expect. Now, I'm going to leave you with some action steps so you have a game plan for where to go from here. Of course, the technical fundamentals, SQL, Excel, Tableau, as I mentioned, using online resources to learn at least the basics. Then, as soon as you can, start building projects for experience. And I talk about the difference of projects for learning versus projects for experience in my portfolio video. Then building a knockout pack package using the Minds framework for your resume and crafting a compelling narrative for how your combined experience can contribute to a data analyst team. And then of course comes the actual job hunt where you're going to focus first on value-driven networking before sending out your resumes. And then when it comes to the actual prep time, thinking about how to prep for live technical interviews, take home interviews and behavioral interviews. And like I said, I will do more videos about this in the future. If you have questions about any of this, please leave me a comment below or follow me on LinkedIn for more tips and insights from behind the scenes of the hiring fence. And I will see you in the next video.